Let us do the book of 2 Corinthians uh, chapter number 4. Verse number 15 and then we will try to do it up until 18. It says, For all things are for your sake, that grace having spread throughout many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. 17. For our light afflictions, which are but just for a moment, is working for us a far more exceedingly an eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, uh, but looking at the things which are unseen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things that are unseen, they are eternal. All right. So primarily what we began with, it said that for all things are working together for our sake. It's like the book of uh, Romans uh, chapter 8 when it says for all things work together for the good of those that love their Lord so you can even see here it says all things they work together for your sake so I just want to do a, a short message uh, spiritual capital we, we, we need spiritual capital everybody has to increase their spiritual capital uh, uh, when you are in a secular world there is what they call what is this human capital human capital is the amount of skill uh they call them intangible resources uh, uh, your skills your knowledge your uh, health and your fitness to be able to do a job which means even if you are qualified for a particular job if you do not have the necessary health to be able to tap into working in that field then the qualification becomes meaningless so spiritual capital is the same it is the intangible uh, assets and the qualities that causes an entire spiritual person to be able to get spiritual advantage. The reason why many believers do not have spiritual advantage is because they do not understand spiritual capital. And spiritual capital, normally, if God is going to release spiritual capital to the life of a particular person, he will cause afflictions. That all things work together for our sake. Now, the reason why it says all things is to capture and, in, and, and encapsulate also the negative inside of it. Now, we don't take the negatively negative, uh, but, but we must understand that there will be negative things that will happen for the building of the character of the believer. Most believers, they want only charisma and not character. But when God wants to and gets ready to do something in the life of a person, God is thinking about character and not charisma. Why? Because charisma is only for exciting moments. When God has already done what he has done and then charisma takes uh, charge and then we are excited and we are driven by joy and all of those things. But character is sustaining a framework of understanding that God means what he said in the beginning even when he looks like now God he has stopped speaking. I've learned something in, in my personal life that when God s stops speaking is because he is focusing on doing. So one of the things we must understand about God is when he stops speaking is because he is about the business of performing, about the business of doing. But it says all things work together for your sake. Dead grace having spread throughout. So God wants a spiritual capital called grace to spread throughout everything that we are doing. Now, grace implies that there are certain things that your efforts and our own abilities naturally cannot do by themselves which means there is always insufficiency when you're operating in, in in the capacity of god there will always be lack. there will always be something that you are not good at something that you feel like you've done so much and you're not getting results for so that grace must spread in that area so what we need is we need a ministry of grace to begin to work in our lives now, sometimes we are too much effort driven. We are too much gift driven, talent driven, and we are focusing on human capital and we are driving away spiritual capital. We are focusing on, I have this advantage and I have this competence, I have this capability, and we end up forgetting the hand of God. It's not about uh, uh, our abilities, naturally. It's not about that. There are certain things that will never move no matter what ability we have, no matter what resource uh, we have. Up until we don't tap in the resource, but we tap in the source. Amen. 
So we need to move away sometimes from resources to source. Because God is the source of all things. After he sources himself, when you capture God, he produ- that, that revelation of him produces and releases resources. Now, sometimes we focus on what God has released and not on the God that is releasing. So the Bible says that grace may spread throughout and cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. So, now, sometimes there are certain things that we say we are saved by the bell. If God did not step in, I do, I do not know what would have I done. So God wants grace to work up until your conclusion is if God did not step in, I do not know what, what would have happened. So that's what God wants. Now, if we do not realize that what, that's what God wants so that we involve him earlier before we struggle longer. So we need to involve him earlier before we struggle longer. Or otherwise, after we've tried everything with our own effort, we're going to realize in the end that, no, yeah, I need God. When we involve God and then we will be doing this, thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. So I've learned early, early, early in the formula of anything that I'm doing. I've learned early to already depend on the help of God. There was a particular place I had to go to preach to. Now in this particular place that I had to preach to, uh, at night I said, okay, I will prepare the message. I, I, was, I, was, I was busy with ministry the whole day, so I could not prepare the message at night. And I said, let me just take one hour, I'll just wake up. I slept up until the time of the preaching come. So the people, they, uh, somebody who was to pick me up came uh, and, and, and was, 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 what is this? I'm Uterel. I'm Uterel like this. I'm waking up. Ah, I'm putting on the suit quickly. I'm, putting, I'm taking everything, the phone and the Bibles and the notebooks, and I'm saying, God, I need your grace yes. to work now. Yes, Lord. When I got there, that was the most powerful, powerful service I ever delivered. Jesus. <laughs> because at that time, I, I, I said, God, you know what happened. This one, I need you. So I figured out when you lean and you depend on God, there are certain things that if I would have prepared that message, you would have never been as powerful as that time. If I would have uh, said already, Father, come and deliver people, I've never seen the miracle signs and wonders, the healing, the deliverances, the prophecies, and the things. I, that day, I knew that I did not pray. I knew I didn't prepare a message, but I was praying on the way, Father, I repent. I need you. I need you. I was leaning on him before I come to the service. Unlike using the time from where I was to the service preparing the message, I began to call on God. I said, God, I need you now, earlier, spiritual capital. We must capture a time frame where God becomes most necessary. The Bible says, in the beginning, God. So, so anything that we're about to begin, we must begin it with God. When you start it with God, I'm telling you, when you start it with God, there is a spiritual investment called grace that is bestowed in that particular area. Now, the Bible says this, therefore, we do not lose heart. What does this mean? It means if we, however, have started something without God, where we are at now, it feels difficult, but do not lose heart. We need to, where we are at now, tap into the spiritual source, which is God, so that we get the spiritual resource, which is grace. So the source is God, but the resource is grace. But the purpose of grace is not for us to, you know, live a good spiritual life. No. Grace wants to abound throughout throughout the many. Having spread throughout the many. Grace wants to abound in every area. So in other words, in 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 our families, there must be a tangible evidence that science can prove that this one Scientifically, this one cannot happen by the efforts of men. This one, only the signs of heaven can perform this. So, once we arrive at that dimension, it means grace has its fingerprints on your life. That's what God actually wants. Now, it's always about the grace of God. I'm not saying we must not get the skills or must not get the knowledge or must not go through the process. But I am saying, when you are going through the process, every time in the step, you must invest in getting the hand of God to move. Because something, there is really a tangible difference between somebody who has grace and somebody who has no grace. A tangible, substantial difference between somebody who God is with and somebody who does not have God. I'm telling you, when you are going to do it with God, there will always be, it might look like there is no difference between somebody who has God and somebody who does not have God. But I'm telling you, there is a printed, visible, physical, carnal difference. Now, by believing this, we do not lose heart. This is only what grace can produce. You know, when somebody is in deep difficulties, it is only grace that can cause them not to lose heart. So we need spiritual capital 
We need spiritual capital. We need spiritual capital. We need spiritual capital. Right. Now, part of getting spiritual capital, we must recognize this. Uh, uh, that all efforts, they cannot equal the abundance that God can release by himself. If I would do nothing, and I just believe God, I'm not saying we shouldn't do something. But I'm saying if I would do nothing and believe God, God doing while I am doing nothing is much better than me doing and God doing nothing. However, more importantly, Luke chapter 1 verse number 37. It says, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. Now, it means if I start doing and I don't do it alone, I do it with God. The results are more visible and more evidential that this one is not alone. The, the Bible says, Abraham took 318 men and he went to face five nations. Now you know every nation has an army. So he took on five armies, five kings, with 318 men that he raised in his own house. The, you knew that God was not... Now, now, now Joshua took 2,000 men. Joshua take 2,000 men. God says to Joshua, Joshua, these people are too much. Sometimes we think too many people is power. Whereas we don't need, need too many people, we need too much power. Oh, and power is not in people, it's in God. Jesus. Now, God said to Joshua, Joshua, re remove some of the people because sometimes God cannot work when you are depending on what you have. Hallelujah. So God has a tendency of removing certain things from us so that he is able to work in us with his own ability. He wants something that will prove that his hand was involved. So he said to Joshua, I know you are going to take on an army. Decrease the number of the people that you have because it's about who you have and not how, and not how many you have. So we can have many people, but if there is no God, the one that has God is mightier than many. Hallelujah. David was but just a mere boy who went to face Goliath. Goliath was a military mind. He was a general in the army. He knew by chance, but the Bible says, David said what? I'm going to kill you and kill your entire army. One man saying, I'm going to kill you and your entire army. Amen. Now, what produced this kind of revelation, this kind of spiritual capital in the heart of David is he knew that he was not alone. Hallelujah. So there is a difference between being alone and not being alone. There is really, really a difference. I tell you, it says this. Even though our outward man perishes, we do not lose heart even though our outward man perishes. Yet our inward man is being renewed day by day. So sometimes some difficulties there to strengthen spiritual capital. Jesus. Whenever you are facing lack of resources, lack of finances, lack of opportunities, it is normally because God wants to bestow something that can work through you tangibly. So I have learned this. I've learned for every physical door that I cannot open, there is something spiritual that God wants to open. Now, how God does it, he causes the outward man to perish. Hallelujah. The outward man to feel like, ah, it's becoming difficult and it's becoming difficult. But I'm telling you this, I'm telling you this. There was a particular time in my life where I felt like it was very, very difficult and I cannot do it. But guess what was happening? In that moment, people were saying, how are you doing it? I knew that I was about to give up. I knew that I was already tired. I knew that I was frustrated. But somebody was saying, I can see that you are not alone. So people are seeing something that you are not seeing that you are having. Hallelujah. The Bible says this, ah, in Genesis, the Bible says this, that Jacob slept. And when he woke up, he knew that there was God. And he said, God had been here and I had not known that he was here. Which means George, George, uh, Jacob, if he had known that God was there with him, in the difficulty, God is there. Sometimes it might feel like in the difficulty, God is not there. But you that has God, you don't see God. But those that do not have God, they see God is with you. Amen. They ask themselves, how oh, in this difficulty, this person, you feel like giving up. They see, how is this person so strong? Amen. Because even though our outward man perishes, yet our inward man is becoming stronger. Is renewed day by day. Day by day. I'm telling you, we are being renewed day by day. There is something that is working that we cannot see. We feel like giving up. We feel like breaking. We feel like, you know, giving it all away. But I'm telling you, there is a substantial evidence that people who are seeing God in you are seeing. That's proof of the work and the print of God in your life. Yet, yet, 
for our light affliction. Paul calls them light afflictions. But just for a moment. Take my burden and I will take your burden. For my burden is light. When, you, we, when we cast our burdens to Jesus, they become light. Amen. You can be walking in the storm with your head up a high and somebody will be asking, how is this person running this thing without money? How is this person doing this thing without uh, support? How is this person all alone and this person is able to laugh and be happy? How is this person? Because at that time, there is a carrier. You know, I was passing at a particular yacht. And while I was passing at the yacht, so the child was trying to pick up a teddy bear, but the teddy bear was bigger than the child. So the child could hold the teddy bear, but not pick it up. So the father picked up the child. And all of a sudden, I saw the teddy bear going up. I was asking myself, what, what made this teddy bear light? I figured out the father has picked up the child. Now the child is able to pick up the, 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 the weight or the load of the teddy bear. So I figured out this, this is the same with God. If we will rest in the arms of God, when he picks us up, the yoke that was heavy for us, when we are in the hands of God, it's easy for us to pick it up. We are able to carry, sir, I'm telling you, we can do much more than we think we can do. When we begin to realize what God is busy doing with us, we will begin to realize that we are able to take much more than we've taken. We are able to go much further than we've gone. I, well, you know when I'm about to give up, I always know that it's a... You know, when God wants to birth new strength, He wants old strength to run out. Now, you feel like you are giving up because it is the end of the old strength. But we need revelation that is the beginning of the new strength. The Bible says, Jesus is the end of the Lord, the beginning of grace. So what we need is exactly that. For certain things to end, other things will begin. But for certain things to begin, certain things first need to end. So, except there is an end of a particular season, there cannot be a beginning of a new season. So, anytime we are feeling moments are getting darker, when the tunnel is getting darker, is because the end of the tunnel is closer. Amen. So, anytime we are about to arrive at the end of the problem, it has to get heavier. Because the Bible says the end of a thing is greater than the beginning. So, when something is about to end, it looks like it becomes more difficult. So it looks like the pain becomes more difficult. The yoke becomes more difficult. The problem is becoming heavier. You know, the dilemma is becoming greater. But it is the end of it. It is the end of it. It is the end of it. We must understand that it is the end of it. For our light afflictions, they are but just temporary. They are but just for a moment. They are momentary, therefore. And is working for us far more exceedingly the weight of glory. Now, glory in the New Testament, we call it uh, uh, according to a Greek doxa, uh, D O X A doxa, it, it means it means it means the full capacity of God. In other words, every time you are coming into pain, pain is pulling is peeling off weakness from you, and it is imparting inside of you power. It is imparting that I realize this. It is possible for somebody to have weaknesses, but it does not mean if we have weaknesses, they are making you weak. Our strength are designed to cover our weaknesses so that even when we have the weaknesses, we are not weak. But we can realize our weakness and think that we are weak. But when somebody sees our strength, it blinds them from our weakness and they do not see us as weak. So it's possible to pray and feel like your prayers are not being answered. And somebody that is looking at you is seeing you walking in a dimension where prayers are answered. It's a mystery how certain things appear certain ways to people. And while we are in the storm, certain pe- we, do, we feel threatened by the storm. By the, but the people seeing us in the storm, they are asking us, how do you have peace in the storm? Because this is only what God is able to produce. Even though our outward man perishes, yet our inward man is being renewed day by day. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but are the things which are unseen. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse number 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. We don't fix our eyes on what we see. But on what we want to see. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. Now because we walk by faith. And faith is the eye of the spirit. We must always tap into the energy of what God is doing. And not what is being revealed to us. So I know that there is something that God is working. 
in our pain in our suffering i know there is something that god is working i have learned that when i am very 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 weak strength is about to be renewed let me just make an example because maybe you are not getting this if the car arrives at empty tank the owner of the car is about to take it to the garage for one sole purpose to fill the emptiness so when we are running out of strength out of grace out of anointing when we feel like we're not making impact the owner of the car which is god has to take us to the garage to the filling station so i have learned that i can never run dry as long as i keep on going to god so that when i feel empty i tell him god i am empty where i'm at so god fill me and the bible says in john oh we will just go to it now and close the bible says in john 11 let us quickly go there 11 22 of the book of john john chapter number 11 verse number 22 spiritual capital is important it's unavoidable every believer must encapsulate and capture spiritual capital spiritual capital for the things which are seen are temporary but the things which are unseen they are eternal they are eternal so what is unseen is forever so when god grace when god imparts grace it is unseen but it is permanent i want us to understand that grace when god gives it to you it is eternal it is forever it works every day and it remains renewed it's like this it's like this it's like when he pours grace the amount that he poured cannot change even if you spend it do you understand it only works for you based on the potential of it that you see but it can it is inexhaustible it cannot run out so when we are dry when we are broken when we are empty and you feel like things are not happening for us we are like us and we are owned by god we need to go to the filling station somebody read john uh, chapter 11 verse number 22 but i know that even now. but i know there, there are things we must know there are the bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free you see it is not the truth that sets you free it is knowing the truth that sets you free now uh, uh, he says i know i know but i know uh-huh. but i know that even now that even not tomorrow that even now God. the bible says now faith anytime we live in the now moment we are living in a moment of faith so we must not live in hope it's future we must not live in in regret and doubt it is in the past we must live in the now now faith i know that even now what god will give you whatever you ask god will give you whatever that you ask him for whatever that you ask him for so if you ask him god i am dry that's why if i pray and they say chant in my spirit that says save my soul lord and i tell him god i feel like my soul is lost save it all of a sudden i pray i feel and i capture my soul as being saved so when i say god i'm running dry god keep me the bible says in the book of psalms david said god keep me for the sake of those that are trusting you because they see me sometimes god will keep you for the sake of those that are looking at you so when i'm about to fall and i'm about to break down spiritual capital is the answer spiritual capital god resource me with necessary knowledge experience necessary abilities and giftings from the spirit dimension that will capture my spirituality and create the well-being of it and paint me very well so that i do not fail for the sake of the ministry that you have bestowed upon my life there are certain things that god will cause you to prosper in not because you deserve them but because it is ministry so god sometimes can bless somebody financially for the sake of ministry for the sake of proving that grace still works now you see you know yesterday i said to somebody grace is real grace is real and it really works it is real and it really works i said to them i'm not preaching it is real and it really works i said if i was a preacher i would have told you about the theology of grace but i am a witness i'm telling you of the evidence of grace i've seen it work in my life that i know that even now whatsoever that you ask from god he shall give you now you understand so i want us to begin to ask god for an increase of spiritual capital 
that even when we feel like our outward man is perishing yet we must understand our inward man is being renewed day by day we are becoming stronger in the spirit day by day day by day day by day i want us to pray and the lord will bless us in jesus name